Women has a transverse plane rotation to the to the right, and when she goes down into the squat, which SI joint gives way? The right. Can you show me that? No, her SI joint gives way. I think you guys were the opposite. Let, let's yeah, do what yeah, we were yeah, doing yeah. before, so we're not to be getting mixed up. There we go. Okay. Initially, so hand flat. No, you were right, Kasha. You were on this hand, nice and flat, hand nice and soft. Okay. So Mary Lynn, go down, bend now, and come on back up. So for those of you that are on the right side, you should be able to start seeing these SI joints give way. Now, and back up. Down again. Now, so her right SI joint is giving way. As she has a right transverse plane rotation, and it's her left hip. No, right hip, which right. hip? Right. right hip, so it's incongruent. So her right hip is translating anteriorly. So going down into the squat is a different task than coming up. So you're looking for failure transfer or non-optimal biomechanics as she goes down. So go down into the squat. And the hip stays forward. Come on back up. Keep your hands there, Kasha. So now a correction of the pelvis this morning. So correct the pelvis for me. So unwinding the transverse plane rotation and giving her pelvis a bit of a hug. And now she goes down into the squat. Gave a partial correction of the hip, but not complete. Correct? Come on back up. So Kasha still feels the hip start to come back but it doesn't completely correct. So now come up onto the thorax. She has a seventh thoracic ring that's translated to the left, rotated to the right. So this is congruent with the transverse plane rotation of her pelvis, eh? Is her pelvis rotated to the right or the left? Pelvis. To the left, yeah, it looks like it. So the hip is actually congruent then, right? Her pelvis is in a transverse plane rotation to the left, her right SI joint's giving way, and her right hip is forward. That's congruent. Yeah. Her thorax now is rotated to the right, translated to the left. Here's your incongruence. Very hard on her back. So now we're going to correct the seventh thoracic ring, so we create a little bit of space. Posteriorly rotate that left seventh ring, and wait, 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 going too fast. Wait, 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 wait for it to try. There's the breath. Wait for the breath to come back. Cool. Now, Kasha, can you come on to the SI joint, please? Back just a wee bit, much as baby allows. Keep your hand nice and flat on that S on the innominate. Over here, Kasha, hand nice and palm on that. There you go. As much of your hand listening as you can. Don't squeeze the SI joint together. Come down into the squat. Fabulous control. Great control. Now, what happens to the head? Down at the squat. She goes, oh, I think it's better, but I'm not sure. So stay down on the squat. And now we let go of the seventh thoracic ring. Oh. Oh. The hip goes so what do you think happened? The hip got better with the seventh ring correction. This is a seventh thoracic ring driven pelvis and hip. So now we have within this whole functional unit, functional unit number one, found our driver. Now we need to know what's perturbing the alignment and the biomechanics of the seventh thoracic ring. Because if we can fix that, we'll restore her pelvic control, her hip alignment, and its biomechanics. That is the integrated system. Okay? <laughs> Fantastic. Great day, everybody.